Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and Airbrush Cleaning Time. Hi and welcome back and today uh, I've been talking about doing some airbrush videos and today's going to be the first one. I don't think I've done any other ones except maybe talking about them but this time we're going to actually break down and clean the Iwata HPM2 single action and the Neo for Iwata TRN1. It is a single action, which means you have paint off, paint on, paint off, paint on. Makes me want to take up karate. Uh, the flow of the paint is controlled with this screw right here. It makes the needle go out or back in or in or back out to control how much paint is actually coming out that's why it's good for just doing base stuff um, pressure controlled by your air source obviously and it is very very simple to use and it's very simple to clean as well now it's got kind of a weird shape it doesn't have like a long handle and some people find that not very good for me especially because of the size of my hands it fits pretty good this doesn't even touch my finger there and it just works uh, I'm not doing any real fine work so I don't need additional support there it's just blowing paint on there um, but really good little airbrush next up is my Neo for Iwata TRN1 now what is a Neo for Iwata it is a Chinese made airbrush apparently for the Japanese company Iwata now a lot of people say Chinese junk blah, blah, whatever these are closely monitored and the craftsmanship on them is stellar stellar really good and they function really really well and they cost a little bit less money so if you think you want to try out an airbrush and you're not really sure try a Neo good value for the money this is a double action, which means uh, pull back the trigger till it stops and you have airflow. Pull, start pulling it once it stops, only air is coming out. Pull it a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. The more you pull back, the more paint comes out, just like a double action where the trigger is on the top and you're pulling it back. For me, this is just a little easier to control trying to control it up here is not as easy as it used to be this I can control much better now I've seen some people will put their finger along the edge like this and use their middle finger never tried that method may give it a try but uh, yeah it's not too bad but very good um, airbrush I use this one for it's a little bit finer than this one I use this one for like smaller camouflage jobs getting up close and getting real fine type work done so that's enough blabbing about them let's go ahead and start with this one we'll do a tear down and start cleaning them up now I will do this in chapters so if you don't want to see this you can skip right to this whatever all right so let's tear this baby down a note before I begin disassembly it is often recommended by manufacturers and people in the airbrush know to whenever possible pull your needle through the front when disassembling as opposed to pulling it through the back that means you have to take these parts off but apparently what it does is it keeps debris from being pulled past the seal the needle seal into the internal workings of the airbrush and possibly gunking things up on an airbrush like this where it's attached to this part here how does it come off? Well, very easily. There's a screw. This one here comes off, or you loosen that. You can unscrew that and leave the needle in place. This one here is used to zero the little numerical designations here um, for the amount of paint, I guess, that's coming out if you want to use the same setting every time. I never use it. I just open it till the paint comes out, and I'm good to go. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use time lapse. I'm going to take this thing apart, and uh, that way it's not taking forever. So enjoy the music, enjoy the breakdown. Now 
and there you go it's all broken down so if you'll notice I took this off and then just pushed in the, the needle that way and pulled it out um, now I've just used this in the last few days and you can see there's a little bit of residual stuff on there but not too bad so next thing I do is I take oh I will make a note of this I use this as opposed to like the little wrench that they supply because this fits in there really nicely and if you don't have very much see how that fits really well makes it easier to thread into the tip there so just a note good little tool to have um, all right so let's start cleaning this thing so what do I do first I get one of those get my cleaning kit which I bought and I've added and subtracted stuff to it um, I've got some of these Dintec brushes some of these as well little wooden ones uh, one thing to make note of these are metal wound so you have to be careful when using them um, yeah and then I have some absorbent paper points I'll show you what I do with those but first I take some just good old-fashioned lacquer thinner, hardware store lacquer thinner, clean strip brand to be precise, and I put it in here like that. And then I drop all of these parts in there like that and set it aside to soak. Then I take the needle and a Q-tip slash cotton bud and moistening it with my thinner I just carefully rub the paint off now keep in mind I use lacquer based acrylics so this lacquer thinner is going to work really good if I were using water based acrylics I'd probably still use this to clean the needle and stuff and mayhaps even I've always used lacquer thinner even when I was using water-based acrylic so I think it might be okay for cleaning purposes you don't want to mix it with paint but it helps loosen it up if not just use whatever cleaner you normally use so needle is nice and clean so I'm gonna carefully set that aside without bending the tip on it and then we'll move on to this so first I'm gonna take this out that's what these are for and I am going to clean the inside of the protective cap here you can see there's all kinds of residual paint I normally do this periodically through the paint um, process and then I just twist it in the threads like that to get out any paint that might be in the threads okay so that's ready to go then I take this this part usually here doesn't have much as far as the way of grubbiness on it um, The nice thing about the lacquer thinner is it evaporates really quickly. Okay, so that's ready to go. And then we have the nozzle. So I think, uh, let's see. Take some dental points here. Doesn't matter what size, really. Get the nozzle. Saturate the dental point. and give it a twirl like that see it gets out all that residual junk and I'll take this and just not very far just just enough till it just meets the slightest bit of resistance because I don't want that wire to scrape up on the inside of there I just use that to get any residual see a little bit of residual paint stuff and this is after cleaning the airbrush pretty well now with that kind of stuff in it's not gonna really affect your paint too much unless you're doing some real fine paint work but so let's try one more paint point or paper point here to make sure that nozzle is thoroughly clean whoops
this and oh come on there you go nice and clean perfecto all right so i'm gonna set that so i'm gonna put that in the lid actually first i like to make sure that that's clean as well i am you could say very fastidious in my care of my airbrushes. The ones I use aren't super expensive, nor are they really cheap, but regardless, I like to keep my equipment in tip top shape and take care of it. I will tell you, I have seen some videos of people using their airbrush and there is just paint just glopped all over. Ugh. It's enough to make a person ill. Okay, so now using this, I'm going to clean out the pathway here. See that? That is just residual paint. Pretty nasty. Now see, this is after I've cleaned the airbrush after a session. Now I didn't clean it quite as thorough as I usually do because I knew I was gonna be doing this today, but um, usually I spray a lot more thinner and stuff like that and it would not be this dirty. However, the reason I bring that up is as careful as I am about cleaning this thing, when you see those people that try and sell a product or make something seem really easy and they say, oh, you can take, you know, just a little bit of thinner in there, slosh it around, hit it with your brush, dump it out, you're good to go. No, no and no. That is not true. And you're just asking for trouble. It's better to go overboard with your cleaning than to try and cut corners because in the long run, it's gonna end up costing you. Pay up front or pay dearly in the long run. All right? Just, so then what I like to do, keeping it tilted down this way because if you tilt it that way, Thinner is going to get back into this kind of stuff and it will cause problems. But I like to squirt just a little bit of thinner in here. You're not going to be able to see it, but just kind of further flush it out. A few little bits of particulate came out. There you go. That should be good. All right. So we got that. Now. I take my one of my handy dandy napkins and I just like to wipe down the outside really well just to get it all nice and shiny occasionally I'll drip some paint and it'll get down into that where those parts come together and I generally get it off right away but this just further gets it all nice and polished now I've had this airbrush for quite a few years it's one of the oldest airbrushes I have uh, as a matter of fact, it is the, no, my Pache is the oldest, but this is the second oldest. And you can see, and I, I do like to brag. I take care of my stuff. And you can tell, look at it, shiny, beautiful. All right. That's all there is to cleaning it. So now, let's put it back together. And again, I will use time lapse to put this thing back together so as not to make this video any longer than it has to be so let's get all of our parts over here this part here a note make sure when you're putting it in that the hole is lined up so you can see the light through there all right let us begin
And there you go, the Iwata HP M2, totally torn down, cleaned up, chop, chop. Um, it probably took all of five minutes. I don't know how long that time lapse is, but it's gonna be pretty short. So anyway, this one's ready to go back to work. All right, next up we have the Neo for Iwata TRN1. Quick note, this extension handle does not come packaged with the airbrush just the airbrush the fitting for it is way up here um, you can use the handle or the uh, hose as a kind of a handle but I just like this a lot better because it's a lot more stable you don't have to worry about bumping your hose around in your hand or anything like that uh, but they do come separately um, another thing about this uh, airbrush is the color cup comes off there's an o-ring in between here o-ring seal and uh, those generally last pretty well but I like to have an extra on hand just in case when I'm taking one of these off it gets mangled. Uh, it does hold up well with lacquer thinners and harsh stuff like that. So um, let's go ahead and take this apart via time lapse. Enjoy the tunes. There you go. That's all there is to it. So let's do the same thing as before thinner drop that nozzle drop those parts put a little bit more thinner in there cover it up then we'll take see a little bit of dirtiness on there I'll just do this like that. There we go. Ready to roll. Again, being very careful not to mess up the tip of that thing. All right, so while that stuff's soaking, we'll do the whoops. Same thing as before. This one doesn't seem to be as dirty in that paint pathway as the other one. Now, these kits come with um, pipe cleaners. I'm not really sold on these because I'm gonna, I'm gonna try one here. Oh, see that? Just waked up a bunch of stuff. Yeah, they're kind of big to fit in the nozzle and cotton comes off and you can have all kinds of troubles uh, let's see let's try something here real quick like this is the wrench that comes with the airbrush just not as handy this one actually came with the cleaning kit and the cleaning kit was only like 20 bucks I think so it's definitely a good investment for uh, cleaning airbrushes. So let's try this one here. It's got a bigger, bigger bristles on it. Let's see how that one works. Again, being careful to make sure you don't scrape metal on metal with that wire that they use to twist it. So then I'm going to do the same thing here. Blow. Basically blowing out the, the internals there. and then Just kind of dab it like that. Then I'm going to take this clean the inside of this part here. Uh, I do want to say, some people may be going, why do you clean an airbrush like that? Well, I guess there's more than one way to clean an airbrush. It's just the way I do it, and it's the way it's worked, and my airbrushes work like a champ all the time. So I'm not saying it's the only way to do it. It's just it, this works for me. 
All right, so there we go. I think we're good there. So again, I'm gonna take Oh, let's do this first. That's pretty clean. So there's that. And we take this, the nozzle cap or whatever you call it. I don't know what it's called. Same thing, nothing in there. Beautiful. That aside, and then a couple more of these. This Let's soak that the nozzle. This. Ooh, that's dirty. I'm gonna drop that back in there. thing is clean I believe now I will say this another thing that's pretty yeah, that's, that's clean that's done another nice thing about this particular airbrush is it is specifically designed to work at low pressures which is really good for doing close-in work stuff like aircraft modeling like on a uh, say a German aircraft where you got those little splotchy camouflage going on or doing fine camouflage work like on a you know a German armor whatever really helps to have a really low pressure okay so I got that little nozzle back on so let's switch back over to uh, the handy dandy time lapse while I reassemble this thing. And there you go. Neo for Iwata, TRN1, cleaned up and ready for action. There you go. The HPM2 single action and the TRN1 double action are cleaned up and ready for the next project. Now, I don't necessarily do this after every project, but uh, every couple of projects or so, I like to I like to clean everything up, and make sure it's sharp and inspect things and all that kind of stuff. But I do not break these down after every session because if I did that I would spend more time breaking down and cleaning my airbrush than I do actually working on painting a model because I change colors a lot I will paint the smallest things it doesn't matter I do a lot of on off on off with the airbrushes so that would not be practical at all but anyway that's it all cleaned up and ready to go so I hope you found that uh, informative I hope it was helpful in some way a lot of people have a whole lot of different airbrushes the ideas are the same the actual teardown might be a little bit different but um, basically it all boils down to keeping this stuff clean keeping it tuned up that way you get the maximum efficiency and effectiveness out of these wonderful tools that make model building so fun so with that if you have any questions comments need further clarification on anything put them in the comments section and I will make sure I check and answer any questions that you might have um, if you have any experience with these airbrushes I'd like to hear your experiences 
And uh, yeah, so that's it. I hope you found this uh, informative and I hope to do more of this type of video if everybody seems to like them. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and a quick tear down and clean up of my airbrushes. Until next time.